strange things happen in this universe all the time, and it's impossible for us to explain them. Among these out-of-the-ordinary occurrences is a recent discovery made beneath the ice of Antarctica that has completely altered scientists' understanding of the continent and its icy cover. Indeed, there is something happening beneath this enormous sheet of ice that has no rational explanation. Given what scientists have found there, Antarctica may no longer be viewed as a desirable vacation destination for the general public. What's the latest scoop on Antarctica? How does it affect people's regular activities? Stay tuned, we will answer all your questions in this video. Before that, don't forget to subscribe to the Future Space. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Is there anything to worry about? A lot of people are surprised to learn that Antarctica wasn't always covered in permanent ice. This enormous continent was not yet frozen over hundreds of millions of years ago. About 34 million years ago, it finally began to freeze over. After digging into Antarctica's long history, scientists found that it once shared the same warm, tropical climate as the rest of the planet. Historically, it was largely forested, with a large rainforest. If so, what altered A's as a result of a sudden climate change 34 million years ago, both the North and South Pole began to freeze over. These areas of the planet became increasingly frigid at a rapid pace, filling up with ice in just a few centuries. Today, they are known as ice houses. Cardiff University and M. Galva Camry scientists traveled to Tanzania to conduct their research, and their efforts paid off when they uncovered cores of mud that had been deposited on the ocean floor millions of years ago. The Tanzanian cores are unlike any others on Earth due to the massive amounts of mud and sand that were deposited on the land, creating a hard surface that preserves answers dating back millions of years. The polar stem ship, as you might guess, has an icebreaker to keep them safe. Do not for a second believe that this makes their job simpler. They have to use a variety of methods and expertise in order to simultaneously penetrate several layers of the Earth. In the first place, this ship is fairly heavy at around 10 metric tons. Additionally, it transports around seven 20-foot containers full of drilling gear to be used on arrival. Each time they set up the drill, they need to use a number of large pieces of machinery. In addition, the drill isn't always firmly planted on the ground. Sometimes it's suspended a few meters above the surface, and a cable a thousand meters in length is used to supply it with electricity. Finally, about eight high-definition cameras installed at various levels of the drill must constantly record the activity below. It may be fruitless if they skip any of these procedures. The drill typically carries around two magazines, one of which is always empty. The scientists prefer to let the drilling professionals handle normal drilling when the time comes because of the complexity of the process. They came across something peculiar during one of their drilling sessions. There was a frenzy of excitement because of this. They found a mud sample, but it didn't look like the typical Antarctic mud. This mud was different, and it had a lot of stuff in it. Some of the scientists on Clark's expedition immediately hypothesized that the unusual substances in the soil might be organic in nature. After the research was complete and the sample returned home, a CT scanner was checked on it a few weeks later. The research conducted by Charger may pave the way for future discoveries. Climate scientists, oceanographers, and marine biologists all congregate in Antarctica. However, astronomers from all over the world also flock to the frozen desert. This is due to Antarctica's status as one of the coldest and thus best locations on Earth from which to study the cosmos. This is because of the region's arid climate and lack of artificial light. NASA, the undisputed ruler of space, enters the fray. In Antarctica, what has NASA been up to? When viewed from above, the Antarctic ice sheet may appear to be a tranquil, ever-present ice blanket that has covered the continent for millions of years. However, the ice sheet can be thousands of meters thick at its thickest points and conceals hundreds of meltwater lakes at its base, where it meets the continent's bedrock. Using the most cutting-edge Earth-observing laser instruments ever launched into space, researchers have updated their maps of the lake systems beneath the West Antarctic Ice Sheet and found two more of these active subglacial lakes named Conway and Mercer. Understanding how this hidden plumbing system affects the rate at which ice slips into the Southern Ocean, adding fresh water that may alter its circulation and ecosystems, is a major goal of the new study. Ice Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite 2 is a satellite created by NASA. Subglacial lakes have been meticulously mapped by scientists. Despite its massive thickness, the ice sheet rises and falls as lakes beneath it fill and drain, and this is something that can be tracked by satellite. 
integration of height data from the original ISAT mission, which was the predecessor to ISAT-2 and the European Space Agency satellite specifically designed to monitor polar ice thickness, is described in a study published in Geophysical Research Letters. For many years, scientists have speculated about the existence of hydrology systems under the Antarctic ice sheet, known as Cryosat-2. The work of glaciologist Helen Amanda Frica from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, to update the classical understanding of subglacial lakes in Antarctica using data from the original ISAT signal to shift in this direction in 2007. Frika discovered for the first time that a system of interconnected lakes fills and drains dynamically over time beneath Antarctica's fast-moving ice streams. It was previously believed that these lakes could static hold melt water without filling and draining. In order to study the effects of these changes on disciplines as disparate as glaciology, microbiology, and oceanography, it was necessary to first learn about the network of lakes at the ice bed interface and how they exchange water. The ISAT-2, however, provided scientists with a potent instrument that returned data of sufficient accuracy for them to begin physically outlining the lake's boundaries. Subglacial lake system changes have been tracked by scientists over this time span. Three locations were chosen because of their extensive satellite coverage and the presence of productive lakes. Two lakes, previously thought to be one, were found to be three by the research team, and a third lake was found to be hidden beneath the McHale ice stream. Lakes under the Mercer and Willens ice stream boundaries, for instance, have gone through at least three periods of drainage in the past 17 years, while lakes under the Michaela ice stream have all followed their own unique patterns of drainage and refilling. However, between 2009 and 2018, the lakes beneath the Academy Glacier evaporated. These shifts are helping scientists piece together the flow rate and course of Antarctica's ice sheep. Already, scientists have discovered passageways that lead from the lakes beneath the ice to the sea. According to Live Science, co-authored in January of 2016, found that a single lake on the Amory Ice Shelf in East Antarctica drained into the ocean at a rate of up to 198 billion gallons per day. It's fascinating to learn that there are lakes in the Antarctic that have been frozen over for millennia. It's a reasonable question to wonder if there's anything living in that lake. Life may not be able to thrive in the two new lakes because of how harsh the surface environment is. John Prisky, head of the expedition, early studies of water samples from Lake Mercer revealed that they contained approximately 10,000 bacterial cells per millimeter, according to a professor of polar ecology from the University of Montana. A remarkable find for a dark body of water buried deep beneath an Antarctic glacier even if it's only about 1% of the 1 million microbial cells per millimeter typically found in the open ocean. The high levels of bacterial life in Lake Mercer was similar to those found in 2013 in a nearby subglacial lake in Antarctica. Using the Prisku, researchers hypothesized that bacteria in Lake Willens and possibly Lake Mercer subsist on carbon deposits laid down by photosynthesizing organisms between 5 and 10,000 years ago when the subterranean lakes were still connected to the ocean. Data from the European Space Agency's orbiting Mars Express spacecraft revealed signs of a buried lake in liquid salt water in 2018. This finding has implications for the search of life on other planets. In fact, according to Prisku, any Martian life hidden beneath the planet's ice may mirror the structure of Antarctica's subglacial lakes. If you're looking for specifics about the blood fall excursion, you're in luck. When the lake that now supplies the salt water for Blood Falls was full, it flooded the entire area. The glaciers that formed at the lake's peak have severed access to the Blood Falls at the lake's bottom. These Blood Falls have left behind water that is three times as salty as seawater. Since that is the case, the water will never freeze, no matter how low the temperature drops, and there's less oxygen and sunlight in the air around Blood Falls too. Does this have the potential to completely alter the game? That's all for now, guys. So if you have anything to add, please do so in the comments section. Be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube for even more amazing videos.